Los Angeles, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences presents the 67th Annual Academy Awards. Brought to you by Revlon, revolutionary products for revolutionary women. American Express, for life, for living. Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day, genuine Chevrolet. And Coca-Cola, nothing looks like it, nothing tastes like it, it's always Coca-Cola. For the 67th year, movie fans have been gathering since early morning to share in the excitement of the Academy Awards here at the Shrine Auditorium. You're invited to join them as the film community celebrates Oscar night. One of the brightest stars of Bullets Over Broadway, Oscar nominee Jennifer Tilly. Nominated for the third time for supporting actor, the highly respected Martin Landau. Nominated tonight for Best Actor, Hollywood favorite John Travolta and his wife actress Kelly Preston. Star of True Lies and three-time presenter Jamie Lee Curtis. Nominated tonight for Best Actor, his third nomination, Morgan Freeman. Oscar nominee for Best Actress tonight, Susan Sarandon and Tim Robbins. Nominated tonight for Best Actress, double Oscar winner Jodie Foster. Last year's supporting actor winner, the personal Tommy Lee Jones. Last year's winner for Best Actor nominated again for Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks, with his wife actress Rita Wilson. That's Holly Hunter. Nominated for Supporting Actor in Forrest Gump, Gary Sinise. From the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse, that would be Sharon Stone there. From the accounting firm of Price Waterhouse, LLP, who tabulate the balloting and guarantee the secrecy and the integrity of the results, Mr. Dan Lyle and Ms. Laura Hobart. Worldwide box office favorite, Arnold Schwarzenegger with his wife, Maria Schreiber. Charming young romantic star, Britain's Hugh Grant and Quentin Tarantino nominated tonight. Double Oscar winner, three-time presenter, Sally Field. That's Lawrence Fishburne, nominee last year for Best Actor. International favorite, two-time Oscar nominee, Sylvester Stallone. The beautiful and talented star of Outbreak, Rene Russo. That's Debbie Allen, five-time Oscar choreographer. The distinguished nominee for Best Actor, Nigel Hawthorne. Steve Martin with former Oscar winner Diane Keaton. Supporting actor winner in 89, third, third time presenter tonight, Denzel Washington. Oscar winner nominated again tonight, Diane Weiss. Nominated tonight for Best Actress for Pulp Fiction, Uma Thurman. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, director Arthur Hiller. billion of you in our audience scattered around the world. Good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, <laughs> or good night. <laughs> uh, no, no. It was, uh, you know, it was in 1895 that movies were first shown to people in groups in theaters. So here it is, the 100th birthday of the professional exhibiting of motion pictures and the 67th Annual Rewarding of Excellence, the Academy Awards. <laughs> the theme of our celebration is comedy and the movies, so we look forward to lots of laughs as we look backward to the comedies that have kept us in stitches. But in addition to the sound of laughter, there's also happily a rising chorus for our National Endowment of the Arts. Because of the possibility of reduction in funding for the NEA and the NEH, that's 
It's a reduction in funding for our culture and our history. That money is desperately needed to help all the dedicated film preservation groups. to prevent any more of our great film treasures from being lost to us, and to encourage the growth of new and dynamic artists who stimulate our feelings and our thoughts and who give us our identity. So please, let's all join together to continue the preservation of our cultural history and provide the seed for our new voices so that in years to come, we at the Academy will still have excellence to reward. Now, let's get on with the laughter and the magic of the movies. Academy Award winner Chuck Workman combines both comedy and magic in a fast-paced journey in and out of the screen through the ages of comedy, featuring Tim Curry, Kathy Najimy, and Mara Wilson. Go ahead, kids. Make them laugh. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> in Keokuk one night, they were so jammed in they couldn't laugh. Ha, ha, ha. They had a laugh. Ho, ho, ho. Plastics. And a mold. Yeah, I've had it all my life. Oh, have it anymore. Make them laugh. Make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? My dad said be an actor, my son. But these are comical when you lay. They'll be standing in line. I'm sorry, I'm late. I mean, I had the one the dress, all the celebrities. Get in here. I'm not getting in there. Honey, I'm afraid of heights. Come on, Tim, come down. I knew Kitchen McFitty, and I'm not going to eat. This is the Oscar job. She can't. She wasn't nominated. Just slip on a banana, feel the world's at your feet. That's right. Smile for Thailand, baby. Make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh. Is everybody happy? Now you can study Shakespeare and be quite elite. And you can charm the critics but have nothing to eat. So put on a smile and the world's at your feet. Make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh. Make them laugh. Don't you know everyone wants to laugh? My grandpa said, go out and tell them a joke. Hello? It's plenty of them. Make them raw. Make them scream. What? Take a fall by the wall, split a seam. You start off by pretending you're a dancer with grace. You oh. wiggle, kill the giggle all over the place. We've done this before. Swings. Make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh. Yawn, yeah, dude. Yeah. Excuse me?
ladies and gentlemen, your host for the 67th Annual Academy Awards, David Letterman. Thank you very much. Now we're five minutes late. <laughs> By the way, if uh, Mr. Hiller is still in the uh, auditorium, there's some guys out in the parking lot that'd like to talk to him about hoop dreams, so. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 67th Annual Academy Awards. I won't lie to you, I'm very, very excited and I've been dying to do something all day, and I think maybe we can take care of this. Oprah? Uma? Uma? Oprah? I feel much better. Have you kids met Keanu? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before we go any farther, the uh, people that I work for uh, back in New York City have asked me to make the following announcement. CBS has signed off for the evening. As you know, of course, tonight is the night that celebrates the phrase, it's an honor just to be nominated. <laughs> That's right, and Jim Carrey is subtle. But you know, <laughs> here's the good news. Losers tonight will not go home empty-handed. In fact, all nominees in the Best Actress category will get the opportunity to have a child with Anthony Quinn. So there you go. <laughs> you can't. So I was thinking about this. Uh, earlier this year, Newt Gingrich was talking about how a lot of social problems in this country could be watched by watching, uh, could be fixed by watching movies. And he suggested, he recommended that, for example, for some of these problems, we could watch Boys Town, take care of some of those problems by watching the movie Boys Town. And then he said that, you know, maybe we could settle the baseball strike. And he recommended then uh, watching Field of Dreams. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, instead of being Speaker of the House, Maybe this guy would be better off working at a blockbuster, you know? <laughs> Something to do. <laughs> Oprah, Uma. Uma, Oprah. It's gonna be one of those things I won't be able to stop doing all night long. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's no getting around it. Tonight is certainly an important event, almost as important as a DreamWorks press conference. <laughs> are you like me? Or are you getting a little tired about reading about these guys? Of course, uh, Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and David Geffen, one of the big stories of the year, got together and formed DreamWorks SKG, their own studio. Well, they're a hit already, aren't they? <laughs> That'll send the stock sky high. <laughs> yeah, DreamWorks SKG, not to be confused with the DreamWorks Etc. ETC. That's a place in the valley where you buy waterbeds, but that's a whole different deal. <laughs> but you know, to me, it's amazing when you think about it what these three kids can do with a dream. With a dream and $1.8 billion. <laughs> I 
I actually, I think that this partnership is going to be really, really good for Hollywood because now, instead of hoping that they're not successful individually, you know, it, it's really a time saver because now you can hope they're not successful as a group and it's a much better deal that way. Uma Oprah. Well, of course, Forrest Gump said life is uh, like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, unless, of course, you're sitting next to Roger Ebert, and then you know you're not going to get any. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I don't feel good about that, by the way. Uh, it's another blockbuster year for Hollywood, uh, the motion picture interview uh, with a vampire. Did over a hundred million dollars business, over a hundred million dollars business. Of course now, uh, in New York City, for marketing purposes, that movie uh, was released under the title Bite Me. Hey, it's all the <laughs> You know, I know that's not much of a joke, but I just thought it might be fun in front of a billion people to say, Bite Me. this year there was a deal now with uh, Savoy Pictures and Sylvester Stallone. As I understand this now, they gave him $20 million to star in a yet-to-be-determined film. $20 million for a yet-to-be-determined film. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. The only thing yet to be determined is which Roman numeral goes after the word Rocky. That's the only thing, right? That's it. <laughs> And then maybe get Oprah and Uma to work in the film. <laughs> One of the pictures nominated tonight for a Best Foreign Film, as you know, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. <laughs> Coincidentally, as I understand it, this is also how Arnold Schwarzenegger asked Maria Shriver out on their first date. <laughs> It was uh, quite a year for uh, romance in the uh, motion pictures. Uh, Hugh Grant, of course, kissed Andy McDowell. Uh, Warren Beatty kissed Annette Bening, and Marlon Brando kissed Larry King. Woo! <laughs> I think I speak for all Americans who happen to see that on CNN when I say, yee, yee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I was given the honor of hosting the 67th Annual Academy Awards, I knew I had to find out as much as I possibly could about the motion picture industry. Well. Living in New York City, <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. I'm also doing very well in Hooked on Phonics. <laughs> Living in New York City, I've learned that when you really want to know about something, anything, there's a group of experts that are always willing and eager to share their knowledge and opinions. Yes, New York City cab drivers. So one night, I went out, hailed some cabs, and talk to cab drivers about the Academy Awards, movies, and life. Hey. Hi. Yeah, how are you? You've won an Academy Award, and we want your immediate reaction. And the winner is Charles. Wow. Uh, have your friends told you that you look like a movie star? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, who do they tell you you look like? I was younger. I Jerry Lewis slightly. Oh, Jerry Lewis. That's great. Dennis, did you ever see that Robert De Niro movie, Taxi Driver? You talking to me? You talking to me? Are 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 you talking to me? What does Hakuna Matata mean? Nothing to me. I don't know either, but it's fun to say it. Let's say it together a few times. Uh, Hakuna Matata. 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 The circle of life. Are you talking to me? The circle of life. Are you talking to me? You talking to me? Hakuna Matata. 
You talking to me, Hokuto Matata? Here, do me a favor. Try on a pair of these special 3D glasses. I'll put mine on. Edwin, are you enjoying the 3D glasses? Yes, that's fun. Yeah. A lot of fun. What do you like better, goobers or raisinets? Raisinets. 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 Goobers. When you go to the movies, do you usually get some of that movie theater popcorn? Yes. Yeah, me too. I love the movie uh, theater popcorn. Would you like some now? I sure would. Eddie, do you do any impressions of uh, movie stars or anybody famous? Uh, Jim's, uh, James Cagney. Oh, James Cagney? Yes. Oh, let's see that. You dirty rat. You dirty, 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 dirty rat. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I only do one impression, really, uh, Eddie. It's a Jack Nicholson. You want to see it? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Welcome for our New York City cab driver friends. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, Quincy Sigourney. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your wigs and keys. It's time to start passing out Academy Awards. That's right, when you hear your name, please come to the stage in an orderly single file and pick up your Oscar. We should all be home in about a half an hour. <laughs> the first award of the evening is for Best Supporting Actress. Here to present it is a man who not only won an Academy Award for his fine work in The Fugitive, but also actually appeared in every movie released last year. Ladies and gentlemen, Oscar winner, Tommy Lee Jones. Five talented women found five demanding roles this year, and by breathing life into them, they have won our admiration and respect, and one of them is about to win an Oscar. For best performance by an actress in a supporting role, the nominees are Rosemary Harris and Tom and Viv. Never before has one of us been carted off in disgrace to a lunatic's house. You swore to us, Tom, you would always look after Vivi. So now you're famous on a bookshelf. What do we have left to give you? Helen Mirren in The Madness of King George. No, this must not be. The son in charge of the father? He will be put away. This is his death warrant. Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction. Not a guess. No, 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 no. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. And now I want to dance, I want to win, I want that trophy. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly in Bullets Over Broadway. Director, you're telling me I'm overacting in the first scene and I don't know what I'm saying? See, you know what I'm doing, teachers? I'm working on a superior laugh, like, ha, 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 he, he, he. <laughs> Diane Wiest in Bullets Over Broadway. You get everything in life that you want. Oh, you thought about what I said before about the way I feel? But I, I, I want to express Don't the... Don't speak. Don't. Just a few things that I want to tell Don't you. When we speak. first met... No. I no. Don't, speak. Please, Don't speak. Please, Don't speak. Please, Don't speak. Please, Don't speak. And the Oscar goes to Diane Weist in Bullets Over Broadway. Oh, golly. Oh, 
Oh, gosh. Just let me put on my glasses because this is as surprising and marvelous as it was the first time. Although this time I need glasses. <laughs> it's a difference, but I'm so privileged um, to be in the company of these gifted women, including Jennifer Tilly, my colleague, who's so wonderful. debt to my loyal friend and the remarkable artist Woody Allen. He gave me such a gift with this role, and with this gift came acting with John Cusack, being lit by the great cinematographer Carlo De Palma, um, costumed by Jeffrey Curlin, working with Santo Loquasto, a great cast, a great crew. Um, my thanks also to Tracy Jacobs, Bobby Greenhut, Jean Domanian, and Harvey and Bob Weinstein. I have to thank my family, Martha, Harris Eulen, Kathleen Tolan, my brothers Greg and Donnie, Clarice, the Steve Tessiches, Arlene Donovan, and my sweet daughters, their sweet patients, Emily and Lily, without whom nothing is anything. And Sam Cohen is their godfather. If the world was a perfect place, Every kid would have a godfather like Sam. Stay tuned for Sharon Stone, Renee Russo, and a performance of the first nominated original song. Tomorrow, when the post-mortems take place in the press and television, a great deal of time and space will be concerned with who wore what and how they looked at tonight's ceremonies. Fashion and films have always been linked together. Our memory of Marilyn Monroe is almost inseparable from the white dress that billowed up above her waist in the seven-year itch, and the white outfit worn by Peter O'Toole in Lawrence of Arabia said as much as words about the coolness of the character. Costumes tell us, in a vivid shorthand, a great deal about the person, the place, and the period of the film. These are the costume designers, who have made such a significant contribution to the films they were assigned to bring to life. For the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, nominees Lizzie Gardner and Tim Chappell made the outrageous acceptable. In Bullets Over Broadway, nominee Jeffrey Curlin found the right note to recreate the colorful fashions of the Roaring Twenties. The grand look of the 19th century was captured by nominee Colleen Atwood for the film version of Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. The Old West never looked better or more authentic than under the watchful eye of nominee April Ferry and her costume designs for Maverick. Elegance is always a challenge to recreate, but the designs of nominee Modèle Bickle for Queen Margot delivered on every count. And the Oscar goes to, and the Oscar goes to Lizzie Gardner and Tim Chappell for the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Well, what a surprise. Um, we'd like to thank, firstly, the costume designers who uh, nominated us in the first place, because that was definitely one of the best compliments we've ever had. And thank you to the Academy for voting for us. It's much heavier than it looks, I tell you. Um, and, uh, Shut up, my turn. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Stephen Elliott, and I wish he was here, and he should be. Um, I'd like to thank Al Clark and Michael Hamlin, the whole cast and crew of Priscilla. They are wonderful, and we wish to God they were here. Uh, to Polygram Pictures, 
Gramercy, Michael Kuhn and the Academy, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I think we need to go and cry with some dignity now. Thank you. <laughs> need a drink. <laughs> I'm telling you, American Express can't buy publicity like that. <laughs> to introduce uh, the first of this year's five nominees for Best Picture, please welcome the star of Speed, this summer's action thriller about a Los Angeles City bus with a CBS primetime show on board. Here now is the only actor in Los Angeles to ever actually ride a city bus, Keanu Reeves. Good evening. Every year, five features are nominated by Academy members as Best Picture of the Year. Their first choice is always the last to be revealed on Oscar night. Between now and then, we will be reminded who those five are. The first of them is a film of three lurid stories that are skillfully woven into a pulse-pounding entertainment of revenge and redemption. Using words as rivets, images as stilettos, this shocking, brutal, but hilarious adventure is entitled Pulp Fiction. Guys, to act this if you want to get out of this. I'm ready. Let's do it right now, right here. Everybody, you call this a robbery. That's how you're going to beat him, Butch. Keep on the rest of me. I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. Hmm. This doesn't sound like the usual mindless, boring, getting to know you chit chat. This sounds like you actually have something to say. Is that a fact? Gentlemen, please welcome one of Hollywood's most exciting actresses, Renee Russo. As is the custom, there are five songs nominated for Best Original Song. And as is the tradition, the Academy Awards tries to get the original artist to perform the nominated songs on the telecast. The first of the nominated songs is from the film The Paper. It was written by one of the most original singer-songwriters of our time. Here to perform Make Up Your Mind is Randy Newman.
Hoffman, Steve Martin, and Sarah Jessica Parker on the Academy Awards. Bad news, ladies and gentlemen, while we were gone, Lizzie Gardner's dress expired. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't leave home without it. Thank you. Now, let's keep moving. Tonight's show is being seen in 170 countries, which means that right about now, in dozens of different languages, people are saying, is that Buddy Ebsen? Well, if there's one aspect about the movies that people all over the world can enjoy, it's physical comedy. And here now is a look at the men and women who risk life and limb to make us laugh. We're making motion picture history here. I want quiet. Quiet from everybody. It is my privilege to present the award for Best Achievement in Makeup. The nominees are... For Ed Wood, Rick Baker, V. Neal, and Yolanda Tusing turned smiling Martin Landau into the aging, scowling star of another generation, Bella Lugosi. For Forrest Gump, Daniel C. Streepick, Hallie DeMore, and Judith A. Corey took principal Sally Field and Tom Hanks over a period of several decades for Peace, War, and Savannah, Georgia. I think I'll go home now. For Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Daniel Parker, Paul Englin, and Carol Hemming went into their workshop to design, fabricate, and then apply a diabolical creature who was brought to monstrous life. And Frankenstein! The award goes to... Rick Baker, V. Neal, and Yolanda Tusing for Edward.
Well, first of all, we'd like to thank the Academy for having this category. Tim Burton, Denise DeNovi, and Touchstone Pictures for making the film. Scott and Larry for their screenplay. All of the actors, but especially Martin for his cooperation and brilliant performance. I'd like to thank these talented women up here with me, as well as all the other makeup and hair people that contributed to Ed Wood. And lastly, I'd like to thank the late, great makeup artist, Jack Pierce. Jack's makeups were the first to inspire me to get into this business where they not only pay and feed you, but honor you for doing something that you truly love. Thank you very much. Love you, sir. Give me a hand here. Hi. I, I have something here I want to show you. Let me just put this down. By the way, I have the feeling I'm not the only one here tonight carrying his rug. <laughs> Can you, you want to help? Just, you're going to love this. Do you mind? Can you just come up here and give us a hand? Yeah, do you mind? Just, just come on up. Yeah, come on. This will be great. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, I appreciate it. Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen, just roll, roll that out. Roll that out if you can. Just, thank you very much. Would it kill you to have worn a tie? <laughs> okay. All right. So no, you can stay up here. I want you, I want you to see this. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Don't applaud now until I ask you to applaud. And I don't think you'll have trouble with that. All right. I want to introduce you to somebody. All right, come right out. Hold, hold your applause. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. Come on. Here we go. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen it? This is, this is Sadie, the dog that spins when you applaud. Here we go. Just. What do you think of that? Okay. All right. Okay. All right, run it. Okay, fine. Just hook her up. Okay, there you go. How about that? Yes, sir, we got us a self-winding dog, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Nice job. Stacy Towns, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Thanks, Tom. No, I'll take care of it. That was just as good as winning something, wasn't it? What a nice hand for little Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm sorry. Folks here to present the Academy Award for sound effects editing is an actress so talented they've bestowed upon her the heady honor of three names. Please welcome the star of Honeymoon in Vegas and Miami Rhapsody, Sarah Jessica Parker. For the past several years, somebody has explained what sound effects editing is. That's usually the high point of the evening. But this year, I have some good news and some better news. The good news is that the Academy's Board of Governors, all 36 of them, are ready to come out here and explain what sound effects editing is. The better news is that instead, we're going to show you who the nominees are. Bruce Stambler and John Levesque for Clear and Present Danger. Gloria S. Borders and Randy Tom for Forrest Gump. Stephen Hunter Flick for Speed. And the Oscar goes to Stephen Hunter Flick for Speed. I used to be a musician, and uh, one of the ways we figured out how to make sound effects were to take musical instruments and break them. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to thank the Academy so very much for this award. I'd like to thank a terrific, fabulous crew that put together an extraordinary soundtrack in no time at all. I'd like to thank John Wright for cutting the picture 
and I'd like to thank my wife, Judy, who was an editor on the project as well. I'd like to thank Ted Galliano and Kim Cooper, post-production at Fox, and I'd like to thank Jan DeBont. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most creative minds in Hollywood, Mr. Steve Martin. Thank you. Uh, David Letterman's monologue I thought was really funny tonight. Of course, anything would have seemed funny following Arthur Hiller. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm doing one of these big budget, high profile Hollywood movies, someone always asks me, what exactly is film editing? And I always reply, how should I know? You're the director. <laughs> but we're here tonight because we love movies. How many memories will we carry with us all our lives because of them? I can still remember sitting in a darkened theater with my arm around 17-year-old Mary Jo Rasmussen trying to get to first base. I can even remember the name of the movie, The Lion King. And here are the nominations for film editing this year. Arthur Schmidt for Forrest Gump. Frederick Marx, Steve James, and Bill Hogsey for Hoop Dreams. Sally Menke for Pulp Fiction. Richard Francis Bruce for The Shawshank Redemption. John Wright for Speed. And the Oscar goes to... Arthur Schmidt for Forrest Gump. The taxi driver said it when he said, wow. Uh, Forrest would have known what to say. He probably just would have said, OK, and let it go at that. But uh, I have a few more little things to say. When you're on the receiving end of the work of so many gifted collaborators, you get to come up here and get something like this. And I have to thank them all for making this and Gump happen especially Bob Zemeckis, who stretches himself in the medium of film every time he goes out and makes a film. And in so doing, he stretches all of us who have the challenge and the fun and the excitement and the pleasure of working with his amazing talent. Thank you, Bob, and thank you all very much. Sally Field, Oprah Winfrey, and the Oscars were supporting actor right after these words. Begins in a small southern town with a pair of dirty sneakers, a bus stop, and a box of chocolates. When state-of-the-art visual effects combine with unforgettable characters, the result is magical. Through the innocent eyes of a man not blessed with great intelligence, we are able to view a generation and an era of American history. Through this man with unwavering values and simple determination, we watch the follies and triumphs of our own recent past. I'm proud to present my boy, Forrest. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Try out my sea legs. 
for you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dane. Yes, I know that. You wrote me a letter, you idiot. Well, well, Captain Forrest Gump. I had to see this for myself. <laughs> The second nominated song is from a film noted for the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger becomes pregnant. The film was junior. The song is Look What Love Has Done, written by Carol Bayer-Sager, Bayer -Sager, James Newton Howard, James Ingram, and the woman who will be performing the song this evening, Patti Smythe. Here is Look at What Love Has Done. <laughs> nominee for her film debut in The Color Purple, Oprah Winfrey. The man who co-produced my first movie and who remains a great light in my life tonight receives the Jean Herschelt Award. It is an honor earned only by one who's humanitarian efforts dignify the film community and bring honor to our society and so it's not given every year. In the past, the Herschel has been presented to a dozen actors, half a dozen producers, 
seven executives, one writer-director, and yes, one agent. This year, a musician has qualified for the honor, and I have the wonderful privilege of ratifying the Academy Board of Governors' unanimous choice. He is the maestro his colleagues call Q, I call friend, and the world calls Mr. Jones, Mr. Quincy Jones. He is no stranger to awards. Q has been showered with them as a composer, conductor, and instrumentalist. But as far as the kid from Chicago has gone, he has not forgotten the struggle, nor his determination to help others realize their potential. They are still to learn to sing each other's songs and dance each other's dances. He contributes his energy to students, his encouragement to youth, and his support to programs that reach out to youth at risk through President Clinton's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. Through his Listen Up Foundation, Quincy works to inspire young people to embrace the values of work and education. He has nourished the vital efforts of the Urban League, City of Hope, Loyola, Howard, Brandeis, Seattle, Wesleyan, and Hebrew universities. The NAACP, Chicago's Northside Center for Child Development, Los Angeles Arts Council. The list goes on and on, and so does the beat. One, two. Q's recording, We Are the World, the best selling single of all times, raised $53 million for famine relief in Ethiopia. His longtime opposition to apartheid and his passionate support of freedom and equality for all people everywhere has, like his music, brought humanity to all he's touched. So now you know why I am so proud to give this Jean Herschelt Humanitarian Award to my friend, I just love him, Mr. Quincy Jones. Thank you. It's nice to feel important. <laughs> I think maybe a bit more important to feel not be nice, though. This moment, this evening, the spot where I stand tonight was not my destination when I was young and full of vinegar. I did not engineer this journey. To tell you the truth, I don't think I could even see this far. And now that I'm older and full of wonder, I can see that maybe other forces were at the wheel. You may have seen my mother Sarah in my music and witnessed the laughter and tears of my children, my family. They were the pillars beneath this life of mine. Theirs is the humanity reflected in this moment. You may be familiar with countless of shoulders that I stood upon to just see where I might go. They were the pillars of, that were beneath my life. Theirs is the humanity reflected in this moment. I also hope you can see reflections of the gift of friendship so generously given to me by Benny Carter, Sidney Poitier, Mo Austin, happy birthday, Mo, <laughs> Clarence Avant, and Steve Ross, my gurus of giving this, and a multitude of others who too have been pillars beneath this life of mine. I accept this great honor in their names on this, the proudest day of my life. Thank you, governors of the Academy for including me in such prestigious company. And you Americans out there, please join the rising support for the National Endowment for the Arts. Each act of creation can be another powerful pillar beneath this life 
of this wonderful and troubled nation of ours. Who knows, the next artist we support may one day stand before you as I do now, humble, proud, cool, and so thankful. Thank you all. Paul Newman, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Tim Allen will join us next on the Academy Awards. Excuse me, sir. Is green the only color of these comments? Hey, Bob Beaver! Bob, what do you do? I'm in artillery! Thank you, Bob. Can we play anything for you? Anything! Just play it loud, okay? Present arms! The 67th Annual Academy Awards is being brought to you by... J.C. Penney. Looks right, priced right, doing it right. IBM, solutions for a small planet. McDonald's, have you had your break today? And Revlon, revolutionary products for revolutionary women. Ladies and gentlemen, Academy Award winner and nominee again this year, Mr. Paul Newman. There is an old expression, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Well, in the land of film, the one-eyed man is also king if that eye is looking through the viewfinder of a camera and bringing all his skill to bear on the look and the feel of the film he is shooting. Uh, this king goes by another title, cinematographer. And tonight we recognize five of them for the outstanding work they have done this past year in bringing their vision to the screen. And the nominees for cinematography are Don Burgess for Forrest Gump. The Oscar goes to <laughs> Should I go back and do that again? No. <laughs> the Oscar goes to John Toll for Legends of the Fall. Thank you very much. Don Burgess, uh, Roger Deakins, uh, Owen Roisman, and Peter Sabinski were the other cinematographers. Uh, uh, this is truly an honor to be here this evening, and I, I must share this with a wonderful cast, a fantastic crew, uh, director Ed, Zweig, uh, Ed Zwick, uh, production designer Lily Kilbert, all who contributed so much to this picture. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I figured out how this works. When you win your award, you come up on stage and you just keep talking until you hear the music. The 1995 Academy Awards for Science and Technical Achievement were presented at a lovely dinner three weeks ago at the Regent Beverly Wilshire Hotel. Nominees were treated to a choice of roast beef or snapper. <laughs> also, live music and a cash bar. <laughs> All this was the Academy's way of saying, you people are too dull to be on the real show. Here now with some highlights of those awards is Arnold Schwarzenegger's stunning co-star from True Lies, Jamie Lee Curtis.
privilege of hosting the banquet honoring the extraordinary contributions of the scientific and technical community. It was a wonderful affair, and we had a lot more fun than you are. And even though we may not understand precisely what the award winners accomplished, you and I, the movie-going public, are all the beneficiaries of their vision and dedication. During the evening, many awards were given out, and we mentioned two in particular this evening as the winners of the highest honor the Academy can bestow, the Oscar. The first Oscar went to a father and son for their concept and development of the ultimate electronic blue screen compositing process. <laughs> first to accept was the son, Paul Vlahos. I'm going to cherish this award and this moment forever. Thank you. Next came the father, the prior Oscar winner, Petro Vlahos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The other Oscar went to the Eastman Kodak Company for the development and production of an exceptional quality film, Eastman EXR Color Film 5244. Accepting was the chairman, president, and CEO, Mr. George Fisher. Kodak moment, folks. Thank you. Thank you uh, to the Academy, uh, to its great president, Arthur Hiller, um, to the scientific and technical committee, uh, thank you on behalf of Eastman Kodak. The Academy, the Academy congratulates all of the men and not one woman who were honored that night and thanks them for their ongoing quest for the next frontier. Bye. Welcome the star of The Santa Claus, Tim Allen. Hi there, this is uh, my first appearance at the Academy Awards. Oddly, I was uh, not nominated for my delicate portrayal of the beloved and weight challenge character Santa Claus. <laughs> So, with that in mind, I thought I'd take this opportunity on worldwide television to promote my personal political causes. Sadly, I uh, have no personal political causes. Thank you. Thank you. You're great. I was a little depressed about this morning, but my mom called, and mom could cheer me up like nobody else. She goes, Timmy, life is like a box of hand grenades. You touch anything and you're going to die. I am especially pleased to present the category of live action short films because back in 1986, my short film won an award at the American Film Institute. You all remember The Last Days of Moje Lake? <laughs> Probably not. Short films, sadly, are not seen enough, which makes them even more special to me. The people who make them do it for the love of the craft. And the nominations for the best achievement in live action short films are Prince Kafka's It's a Wonderful Life, Peter Capaldi and Ruth Kenley Letts. Kangaroo Court, Sean Austin and Christine Aston. On Hope, Joe Beth Williams, Michelle McGuire. Sura, Paul Unwin, and Nick Vivian. Trevor, Peggy Reisky, and Randy Stone. And the Oscar goes to... It's a tie. Oh, mon dieu. Fred's Kafka, It's a Wonderful Life, Peter Capaldi, Ruth Kenley Letts, and Trevor Peggy Reisky and Randy Stone. Um, well, Trevor first came to life as a stage piece, conceived after our wonderful writer James Lucine heard a report on NPR about teen suicide and learned that approximately one third of all teens who kill themselves are gay. We made our film for anyone who's ever made, felt like an outsider. It celebrates all those who make it through difficult times and mourns those who didn't. 
In honoring us, the Academy honors everyone who so generously supported our project. Our thanks to them and my husband, Josh, who helps make all things possible. This project was a perfect experience for us. From the beginning, um, it seemed to be blessed. Uh, everybody we asked to help said yes. Peggy, James, and myself wanted to send a message. Our cast crew and contributors made it possible. We want to thank our family and friends, Alan Landsberg, Peter Roth, Charlie Goldstein, and especially Jody, whose love, support, and encouragement inspires and helped us achieve our best. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is very, very thrilling for us. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, thank the Academy and I'd also like to very much thank the Scottish Film Production Fund and BBC Scotland who backed our film with so much goodwill and generosity. Uh, I'd also like to thank my husband, Crispin Letts, who makes everything possible for me. And I'm now going to pass you over to Peter. Okay, thank thanks. You. I've got 19 seconds, a very short speech. I would like to thank everybody who worked on the film, gave them, gave them themselves a huge amount of their talent and generosity. Richard E. Grant, who was fabulous. Ruth Kenley Lett, uh, who's a fabulous producer. Uh, and uh, Elaine Collins, who is the real creative dynamo behind it all. Uh, and my, my mum and dad. And the Academy, thanks a lot. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah what a party! <laughs> what a flurry! <laughs> oh, that's rich! Ah, you gotta love these Shriners conventions! <laughs> what a lollapalooza! What a mm, that's funny. Well, I'll be <gasps> Jody Foster! Tom Hanks! Ooh, ooh! Sharon Stone. Boy, what a pleasure. Is Osama's Shrine Auditorium? The Academy Award? The nominees for the best achievement in animated short films are... The Big Story, Tim Watts and David Stoughton. Bob's Boyfriend, Allison Snowden, and David Fine. The Janitor, Vanessa Schwartz. The Monk and the Fish, Michael Dudok DeVitt. Triangle, Erica Russell. And the Oscar goes to... Hurry up, hurry up! Bob's birthday, Allison Snowden and David Fine. Congratulations. I think I'm just gonna stand here and watch the clock count down. It'll be easier. Uh, thank you to the Academy. <laughs> We'd also like to thank Channel 4 Television in Britain and Claire Kitson in particular for commissioning the film and for supporting British animation so much over the years. We'd also like to thank the National Film Board of Canada, Barry McLean and David Verrill for co-producing with us. Um, also thanks to Andy Hamilton, Harry Enfield, Janet Perlman, Patrick Godfrey, and everyone who worked so hard on the film over two years. And all our friends and family for all their inspiration and support. And most importantly, we'd like to uh, dedicate this award to the memory of our dear friend Mike Gribble, who sadly isn't here tonight. Thank you very, very much. Susan Sarandon, Tim Robbins, and a special production featuring nominated songs from The Lion King next on Oscar Night.